Alright, so in this video, I'm just going to give you guys a few tips for those who are thinking about visiting Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. You want to head to the northeast part of this country to experience some of the culture and you would like to know a few things about the place before, before you get there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to help you out with that. First things first, whenever you're going to a new place, it's always good to check the weather or the best time to visit. Last thing you want to do is arrive somewhere and there's hurricanes blowing. It's raining, you got tsunamis. For Salvador, it tends to rain more in the months after March, like the middle of the year, so from around April to July-ish, if I'm not mistaken. If you don't mind extra rainfall, then you can visit during those months and I'm sure prices will be lower. However, if you wanna get the most out of this place, I recommend visiting December to March, especially because that's around the carnival time. Next up, we have the outlets, which are a little different than the ones from the US, if you can't tell. This is the reason why you should always have a universal travel adapter. So you're able to use any outlet, any plug in the world. However, if you're staying at a place that caters towards tourists, so for example, hotels, maybe popular Airbnbs, hostels, etc., etc., chances are they'll have outlets and sockets that um, are compatible with the ones from the US. My Airbnb had that. They had both, the ones from Brazil and the ones from the US. But just in case, always have a universal travel adapter and you can easily get one. I believe they sell some at Walmart or you can go on Amazon and just type it in and get the cheapest one. You don't need anything fancy. Third one on the list is to always have cash on you. This is a big one. There have been a few places where my credit card didn't work. For example, one at a supermarket and the other at a pharmacy, the machine wouldn't accept credit cards, only debit, which to me seemed a little weird. I don't think I've ever encountered experience like that where it only accepts debit cards. And there were two other occasions where I was at a restaurant and my credit card wouldn't work. Thankfully, all of those situations, I had cash. I always bring emergency cash just in case and you should as well. The last thing you want to happen is you and a a loved one are out eating steak and lobster. When it's time to pay, your credit card gets declined. You left all your cash at home. Now you and your loved one are in the back doing dishes. You don't want that to happen. And I don't think Salvador is the only culprit. Like I've had this happen in another city in Brazil. Next one on the list. If you've been to Mexico, maybe certain parts of Panama, even Colombia, Brazil is different in this manner where, well, Salvador, let me say Salvador. Salvador is different where no one speaks English or nearly no one speaks English. I'm staying in the tourist area and I go to different markets and, and stores and restaurants. Not many people speak in English. I went to the historic center, which is very touristy. Not many people speak in English. I went to the bar area, uh, Rio Vermelho, which is a neighborhood known for the bar scene. Not many, there are a few people, but not many speak in English. So I believe Salvador is more of a Brazilian tourist destination compared to Rio. Moving along, here's the next tip. And this isn't really a tip, just something you need to know. And that is, and I'm gonna show my, my ignorance right here, but the time zone. Traveling around Latin America, you know, the Caribbean, certain parts of Central America, South America, like Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, the latest time zone I was experiencing then was Eastern, New York time zone. And I assumed in Latin America that was the latest, which is not the case. If you look on a map, Salvador lies farther east of New York, which means it's two hours past Eastern time zone. So for example, I'm from Seattle. When it's one o'clock in Seattle, it's six in Salvador. When it's three o'clock in New York, it's five o'clock in, in Salvador. So this definitely caught me off guard whenever I would call family and friends back home or whenever they would call me and I'm like, hey man, it's three o'clock in the morning, and I'm asleep. They're like, oh my, my bad, my bad, my bad. But so just keep that in mind if you work online and you have business meetings, et cetera, et cetera. Next up on the list are the ride sharing apps. Now Uber is the most popular and I used it the most. However, there were a few times where everyone just kept canceling or they wouldn't accept my ride. So there's another app in Brazil, it's called 99. I would download this so you can go back between the two. If Uber is not cooperating, you can go to 99 and vice versa. And last but not least, I want you guys to know that Salvador is a huge city. And I'm saying that because my videos only showed 
it, it didn't show much. There are way more places to visit, especially when it comes to beaches. They have like islands you can take day trips to. So don't assume that what I showed you in my videos was all that's here. There's a lot more. I just wasn't able to get to all of them. I'm on somewhat of a time limit. I have certain plans for this year, so I have to keep it moving. But just understand that there's way more to see in Salvador. With all that being said, these are just a few tips, a few things to keep in mind for those who are planning their trip to Salvador, Bahia, Brazil, Northeast, where there's a ton of culture. Anyways, I hope you guys found some value in the video. I hope that it's helped you. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Deuces.